In this video, Frank Turek is debating with an LGBTQ plus IA uh, student. Um, so we all know how that goes at times. Sometimes they can make erroneous arguments and statements. Frank does his best to stay on subject. But for some reason, this student on the college campus doesn't want to allow Frank to talk. Take a look at this. I'll just say my name is Mav. Um, say what? Uh, Mav. M -A -V. Mav. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. So my question for you is, if God said that there is going to be male and female, and then there's some variety in, within that called intersex people, why do you guys insist on this binary definition of sex when clearly biology is not so binary? There are, are intersex people and you'll say, oh, it's just 1% of people, et cetera, et cetera. And then also, let's extend that to same-sex relationships. So you have someone who's born heterosexual, bisexual, or homosexual. So why is there this thing where God would say, that's fine, that's fine, but that's not fine. And he creates them knowingly like that. And then you, in the past, the church has said these people are mentally ill. They deserve to be, you know, put in institutions, penalized, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, I could go on and on about that. But my question is, why do you, you say that if I'm going to be a Christian again, that I need to repent from being LGBTQI plus and then accept this narrow version of the gospel. That to me is like conversion therapy and the UN and all these other medical, um, major medical organizations and the US and around the world have called that torture. So for you to stand here and just offend that, that's pretty messed up. What is your response okay. to that? All right, so here, the burden of proof is not on Frank Turek. It's on MAV. MAV needs to be able to prove his argument and his point. And really, at this point, he really has none. And we all know that we are born in sin and shaping in iniquity. The Bible tells us that. But we are not, quote unquote, born uh, homosexual or born bisexual or anything of that nature. You're not born, quote unquote, a transgender. You know, God does not select our sin for us. We have a predisposed disposition to desire sin because of our Adamic nature, but we select our vices, not God. And so also we can add to that this point, that one of the things that we have to point out thus far in the video is that Mav is arguing not simply against Frank. <laughs> Mav is not arguing against himself, he's arguing against God, right? And the Bible tells us in Isaiah 45, verse 9, in the NIV version, it says, woe to those who quarrel with their maker. He's arguing against God. He's upset with God's absolute truth and that God made him a man and that God can pick our sex. He's arguing with God, not Frank. What is your standard of morality? I, I'm myself, I'm a secular, uh, humanist. I think that everybody is innately good. Um, what do you mean by good? Well, obviously murder is wrong. Why? Because if I went and murdered someone's kid, then that mother or father would not have a child and they would be in mourning and that caused them some great psychological turmoil for the rest of their lives and trauma they're going to have to work through in therapy. So objectively, we can see psychologically they're not going to be doing too hot. So, of course, okay, but that's objectively wrong. Why is it objectively wrong to harm people? Because if we are going to come together as a society and cooperate as a human race, we need to have some sort of mor like moral standard to bind us together, regardless if there's a God or not. But whose moral standard? I mean, Hitler had a pretty tight moral standard within Germany. Why was <laughs> he true. wrong? Well, obviously, he was wrong on many levels. I mean, the fact that he murdered by, millions of people. What makes it standard? Why is it wrong to murder people? Well, I'm just going to say, no. within my own experience, if I <laughs> witness the murder of someone, which go. I gratefully have not, I would be 
you know, obviously, like, there would be a sinking feeling inside of me, like, wow, I just lost, witnessed the loss of someone's <laughs> life. That's a terrible thing to see. Come on. Like, if someone got ran over by a car, and it was so quick, and you just didn't see it coming, like, of course that would screw someone up for life. So, to me, it's like, you don't have to attribute it to whether there's a god or not. Like, psychologically, the way that my brain is going to see that is like, wow, I just saw harm or conflicted onto another, or inflicted onto another Yeah, yeah so you're, 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 you're describing how you know something's wrong. Right. The yeah, question so is a psychological feeling yeah, and the, a the physiological question is, reaction. The question is, why is it wrong if there's no God? So wait, can you repeat that last thing? Yeah. You're explaining one of the ways you might know that something's wrong. Right. The question is, why is it wrong if there's no God? Well, I just think that as a society, we wouldn't be able to just say like, oh, we should allow murder. We should allow this and stuff to happen because obviously slavery was wrong. We abolished that, obviously. Okay, okay. You're, Why you're, you're bringing up all Why sorts of wrong? moral wrongs. But what I'm you, saying is that that was what we need to cooperate as a human race, yeah, regardless you, of whether there's a God or not, because evolution has in, um, incentivized cooperation. If I share my fruit with my person, they're going to survive. If I take care of the elderly person in my clan, they're going to survive. No, no, no. If I take care Ev of the evolution. children in my village, they're going to survive. Evolution. The, human, the, the human race will survive and reproduce, and therefore Mav, everyone Mav, else Mav. is benefited from it. Mav, Jumping. evolution is survival of the fittest. Topic. That's not true. There's a lot more to it than your okay, straw well, well, evolution. You're just so wrong about this stuff. I'm sorry. Where am I wrong about evolution being the survival of the fittest? You probably read uh, um, that guy who Darwin funded made? the Ark yeah. Encounter, maybe you, you or whatever in Kentucky. You Keep probably him. read his straw man version of evolution, and yeah. I really don't think that you really talk to biologists and you really know what's going on okay. because there's a whole lot of the stuff Mav, that Mav, a lot of you right. guys hold, hold will just on, straw hold man on. Mav, and Mav. not even take as like what it actually says. Mav, hold Mav. On. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> be quiet. There are a lot of people behind here. <laughs> I'm asking you simple questions. You come up asking a moral question. I'm asking for a moral standard. You haven't given me a moral I standard. I have. I've How, said objective no. morality. That is a moral standard. Where does the objective morality come if there is no God? From I'm not the source us. of objective. From within our wiring. See, here we go. He's asking him basic questions. Where does morality come from? And then Mav goes on to say that he believes in secular humanism. Now let's take a look at that. Secular humanism is a philosophy, belief system, or life stance that embraces human reason, logic, and philosophical naturalism while rejecting religious dogma, supernaturalism, and superstition as the basis of morality and decision, decision making. It, it, it's it's a fallacy. We, we, we all know that. Now, secular humanism also combines the humanist ethic with the metaphysical doctrine that God does not exist. There is no God. So if God doesn't exist, then why is it wrong for someone to be murdered? Why would it be wrong if Frank Turk just walked down there and just, you know, <laughs> picked up Mav <laughs> by the neck and said, look, since you won't listen to me, I'm going to throw you out. That would be wrong. Why? Because of God, the basis of morality, absolute truth. We understand right and wrong from God, not from man. And so secular humanism does something that the Bible calls foolish. The Bible says in Psalm 14, 1, that the fool hath said in his heart that there is no God. The most foolish thing you can do is be a secular humanist like Mav and say that God doesn't exist, but expect us to have a basis for morality. You're importing a moral standard into your atheistic system and you're stealing it from a theistic worldview. That's not <laughs> true. Well, I'm sorry. You don't so get many morality. Moral standards besides Christianity. Mav. There's Buddhism. There's right, stop. Shintoism. Mav, 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 there's stop. all these different moral stop. codes from all over the world that I've read about that I've imported. So Mav, that's not true. I'm, I'm, Mav, I'm going to have to ask you to move away from the microphone unless you give me a chance <laughs> to respond. Okay? Fair enough. Okay. So there is no mo move objective moral Mav. standard unless some kind of God exists. Everything is just a matter of human opinion.
And so when you hold up a sign that says that certain people have treated LGBTQ people wrongly, you're well, they assume- have, and there's oh, so much oh, evidence for it. Mav, so. Mav, you might be exactly Mav. right about that. But I you know I am. It. I have Mav. experiences and Mav. data to back okay. it up. Okay. okay, well, I'm sorry that people have treated you poorly, but you there- You don't have to go on and spread these bigoted viewpoints on YouTube and Facebook like you do. It's just a bunch of misinformation. You have no idea. Mav. You have blood on your hands. Okay, oh. Mav. Oh, do, you, wow. do you want to have a conversation or you just want no, to- No, I really just That's would like you to just apologize and turn around and okay. see that what you're doing is harmful. Mav, there's only harm if God exists. Harm is only evil if God exists. And so there you're is stealing- harm regardless if God exists right, or not. Thank you, Mav. You're not interested. Thank you for coming. I appreciate people coming here, have a different point of view, but it's got to be a dialogue. It can't be a monologue. And I think that, yes, people who identify as LGBTQ have been treated poorly. But I also think now that Christians are being treated poorly, and both of them are wrong. We ought to respect people even if we disagree with them. But that's a moral category, and respect only makes sense as a moral category if there's a moral standard beyond us. Mav, my friend, what's going on? I mean, you, you, he allowed you to come to the microphone and to share your position. And he attempted to have dialogue with you, Mav. But you continued to cut him off over and over and over and over and over over and over and over and over again, really showing the audience and the listeners that you don't care about what he has to say. You just have a point to get across. And hear me, there are many people today in society that are walking in evil and in sin to push their point. And their point becomes their banner and their agenda. And as Christians, we must be sensitive enough to the spirit to know and discern when we're contending with the person who really just has an agenda or a person who has been manipulated by a system, right? You have to be able to find out when that has taken place. Uh, Frank Turk displayed patience. He also countered the pride that Mav was filled with. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 tells us this. It says, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, Mav. It's not proud, Mav. It does not dishonor others, Mav. It is not self-seeking. Mav was self-seeking. He just wanted to get his talking points that he rehearsed across. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. There it is. And so Frank showed Mav love. While at the same time, Mav was saying that he's pushing all of this misinformation and Christians are the problems and wah, 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 wah. Listen, the only way for a person to grow and to understand different viewpoints, you have to be patient enough to listen. Frank Turk is a mastermind. He's doing a great job in exposing the ideologies of people who are anti-God. Subscribe to my channel, like this video, and share this content. Thank you.